coming off of a just kind of a heartbreaking uh, weekend at home um, where we uh, lost to two really good teams, uh, USC and UCLA. Um, both games, I think you have to give credit to them. They beat us. Uh, but I think in both games, we feel like we left uh, something on the table there. So it's hard. Um, but you know, it's it's easy to talk about process and um, all of that when you're winning, and uh, when you know when you drop a couple, you can't get derailed and think that uh, things aren't working because they are. So every weekend, you know, every week our goal is to improve, and every every you know I can look back at last week and say we got better in a lot of areas, and so and that is what the process is all about, um, and we just have to be uh, even more locked into. Uh, trusting the process and, and I see a lot of good things out there uh, certainly every time we play we want to win and it's really uh, tough when you feel like games slip through your hands um, but that's the nature of the business and, and you just have to regroup and and uh, get ready for the next game I mean that's that's what this business is and uh, to Go into more in depth on that process with uh, the team's success early this year, mm -hmm. and w even with the tournament approaching in about a month, uh, postseason starts. So, does getting the team to focus become more difficult? Uh, I don't think so. I think it. I think the hardest time to get a team to focus is the end of January because the tournament postseason is not really in sight yet. It's it's not really on your radar, and kind of the newness of a season has. Uh, worn off, and so I think end of middle end of January is kind of the tough time. Um, and once February hits, there's a little bit of adrenaline that kicks in uh, because postseason is in in sight. Um, and basketball season's a long season. I mean, it really is, and and it's hard mentally and it's hard physically uh, for players and coaches. And so uh, I I'd be shocked if if we had to try to motivate this team. Um, to get them to focus. These guys want to win, and uh, I've been impressed with, you know, I think testament to the fact that this process is working is that they were devastated after Sunday's game. And, uh, you know, and why is that? Because the expectations have been raised, and they're starting to really believe in themselves, and the confidence is sincere. And uh, if none of that was true, then, you, you know, you lose to the 10th ranked team in the country, and you shrug your shoulders and say, oh, well. Uh, but but when your expectations are a little bit higher and, and you're starting to really believe, um, then you're going to be bummed. And that's just a testament to the fact that the process is working. So in answer to your question, uh, I don't think I'm going to have to motivate these guys at all. The nature of college basketball, both men's and women's, is all about playing your best basketball at the end of February going into March. Mm -hmm. What do you have to do to continue that process to get to that point to where you're playing your best ball come the beginning of March? Uh, well, I, I don't think there is an exact formula for that. I think um, rather than focusing again on March, we've got to focus on this week against Colorado. And we've got to get a little bit better than we were last week uh, for these games to, to succeed. And so I think you just, if you just, it's building blocks. If you, I mean, as simple as that sounds or as cliche as that sounds, that really is what it takes. So if you can just get the team, and, and they have, I think, buy in to just being a little bit better than we were last week and then next week being a little bit better than we are this week, then theoretically you should be playing your best basketball in March. Uh, Devry Owens has earned a little more playing time as of late. Uh, can you speak about her and what she brings to the team? Yeah, Dev's an um, experienced player, and, and she, you know, she's done a nice job. We're playing her a little bit out of her natural position just because of our uh, injuries that we've had and uh, with losing Nakia Arquette to a, um, a, a season or career-ending kind of knee injury. Um, you know, we've, ha we've asked Dev to move over and kind of play a, a forward spot. She's more of a natural guard. Uh, and that's hard on players, and, and that's not lost on me as a coach. Um, but she's done a nice job with that. She has great vision. She can shoot. Um, so, you know, we need her. During the UCLA game, when Potter got into a little bit of foul trouble, you went with a smaller lineup. Is that something we can expect to see more <laughs> of? Uh, no. I mean, <laughs> Not not in uh, not in a perfect world, but you know we Potter got her second foul at the end of the first quarter, I believe, with about a minute to go or so, um, and so you know Joe 
Fatu Asi's done a great job for us, um, but I felt in that second quarter we had a, a, a solid lead. We had some momentum, um, and I saw Joe starting to get a little fatigued, um, and so just out of kind of necessity, uh, went with a lineup that we've never even done in practice one time. So uh, all I was trying to do was get us to halftime, uh, maintaining that momentum, and I think we did a good job. Uh, the, we, I mean, the five of those guys that were out there, I had nothing to do with it. But um, they did a nice job and, and just kind of, I mean, we, Paige Crozon, six foot one, Paige played the middle of our zone. She's never done that, not once, <laughs> one rep. Uh, and so they did a good job. They just kind of went with it, and we actually maintain, were able to maintain some momentum. And with Colorado coming up, are there any specific areas of focus that you're going to have going up against the Buffaloes? Well, you know, Colorado's way, way, way better than their record in the Pac-12. Um, they've been in every game. Uh, I, I, I think they're really good. They're very young, um, but they play so hard. And uh, they've been in a lot of a lot of the games they've lost. They've been right there, uh, similar to how some of the games we've lost recently. Um, where they probably feel like they left, you know, left a game on the table or left it slip through their hands. So, um, you know, what we can't do is think that they're not as competitive as they are because uh, they'll punch us in the face and beat us. So uh, I think mostly we've got to just be uh, mentally prepared. They, they can really pressure you defensively. Um, they play with a lot of energy. Uh, they, have, they run a lot of stuff where they can score in bunches. Um, they've got some young kids that can really score. And then, you know, seasoned vet in the post that can score. So we, th these are going to be tough games. They really are. Um, I know looking at it on paper, you think, oh, okay, well, it's not, you know, like USC, UCLA, but it is. Um, they're, they're very talented, very tough. And so what challenges does that scheduling situation with a back-to-back -back against Colorado present? It's not – not great. <laughs> I don't know of a single coach that likes it, uh, but it is what it is. It's kind of how the, the – because of when the conference tournament is and you kind of have to work backwards and fit it all in and with the schedule the way it is, uh, the, you know, the only way to do it is this way or, um, you know, split up and you play your travel partner at another random time, maybe right after Christmas or preseason or whatever. Um, so this is really kind of a necessary evil that the conference has dealt us all. Uh, so it's not ideal. I think whoever wins the first one, um, you know, is it's it's tough. It's kind of a trap game. The second one because it's a natural instinct for your players to relax a little bit after you win, after you beat somebody, uh, and then to have to turn around and play them 72 hours later. Um, it's tough, but I think that's where coaches can kind of uh, earn their keep a little bit in terms of tweaks and and things you can do so that the opponent doesn't get comfortable with what it is you do. Um, you know, it's. It's like playoff basketball almost. We have a series, you know, best of three, where you've got to make adjustments uh, to play the next game. So that's what I anticipate. I don't think uh, either of these games are going to be easy games, though. And uh, Malia Nawahine has really made an impact lately with her scoring and been really tough on the boards. So uh, when she's playing like that, what does that add to your team? Well, it's hard to take Malia off the floor. Uh, because she just does so much that even a lot of stuff doesn't even show up in the stat sheet. But um, she's just, I've always described her as just feisty and uh, plays with a little chip on her shoulder, which I love. Uh, and you, you got to have players like that. Um, she's not afraid to mix it up. She's, you know, 5'10, 5'11, and, and, you know, pretty thin. Um, but she doesn't play like that. She's, she's fearless, and, and uh, but it's hard to take her off the floor because of just defensively. I think she's our, our best uh, defender on ball. Um, and, and then offensively, she can really get out and run and, and puts pressure on the defense that way just because she's always trying to be the first, first person down. And, um, so, and now she, you know, she's continuing to learn where she can find her shot, the one thing that we work on and talk about is uh, letting the you know letting shots come to her a little bit, not trying to force stuff. Um, and she's gotten I think what you're seeing now is she's that's starting to click a little bit, and so she's not forcing things and letting the game come to her, and and she's becoming really really effective. And as a team uh, for rebounding, you lead the league in uh, in rebounding during league play. So is that something you can hang your hat on uh, heading into the second half, the second round of? 
Pac-12 play. Definitely. And I'm proud of our team for that. We had 21 offensive boards against UCLA. Uh, and not one of our players would win a jumping contest against any one of theirs. Uh, I mean, so that just, I mean, 21 offensive rebounds is, is a ton. That's 21 more chances to score. And, um, and, and to rebound like that, it really is a team commitment. And they just, you know, it's a, it's a battle of wills kind of thing. And, uh, you know, I think rebounding is 90% heart and desire and 10% God-given ability. So uh, these guys have bought into it. And I think we give ourselves chances um, to win games because of rebounding. I philosophically, from an X's and O's standpoint, believe in that. Um, and you know, you can have a bad shooting night or a, or a lower percentage shooting night. If you're going to get 20 offensive rebounds, it doesn't matter. Um, you're going to get yourself to the free throw line and you're going to do some things. So uh, I'm proud of that stat, and, but we can't relax. Our goal wasn't to be a great rebounding team for half of conference. Uh, we got to finish it out. Great. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.